Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, <laughs> Kathy and I are just having a little chat here. <laughs> Welcome to Trail Talk. We are uh, here live, Kathy, this is our Chuck Wagon studio, as we like to call it, um, here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma. I'm Edie and this is my special guest today, Kathy Snyder. And Kathy, you're here from the toy shop. Yes. Right? Boy, doesn't that sound like a fun place. Okay. Um, so, uh, my my knowledge of the toy shop is um it's a little bit limited but i mean i know that you guys are a staple of the community you've been around for a while and uh, i know there's all kind of service opportunities for people who want to help you i know that there are uh you guys give very generously to people um around the christmas season and, um, but I mean, that's, you know, I've kind of peripheral knowledge. I have a feeling you've got a lot more information <laughs> that you can tell us. So uh, first of all, how long has the toy shop been around? Well, the toy shop was actually started in 1940 by wow. AAUW. And so, but in the uh, early sixties, uh, they had decided it had grown too much for them. And so they asked Church Women United to take it over who is still the sponsoring organization of it today really it's, i did not know that but it's been wow. on the ground for a long long time wow that yes. is impressive so what is that like 70 years 70 80. plus years 80 years <laughs> wow <laughs> yes. yeah yes. i guess so 2020 yes. that would have been 80 years yes. so oh my goodness a, a staple of the community for yes. sure yes. so um back in the 40s then do you do you know like how many people they serve? Like, can you? We really don't have notes that uh, go back from the 1940s, but I became involved in the 1980s and, uh, and more involved as a chairman in the 90s and along with Lynn Samples. And at that time, we were um, probably serving around, uh, I don't know, maybe 500 children or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, four to 500. But we did also give out mostly used toys at that time. Probably 80% of the toys that we gave out were used toys. Mm -hmm. uh, when we became involved, there uh, were no fundraisers or anything. So everything that they got, they just depended on the people to bring in December to them. And, uh, and then a few people brought money and they would go out and buy some gifts. But mm -hmm. you know, it was very limited at that time. And so after Lynn and I became involved with it, well, then we decided that it was probably a good idea to have some fundraisers to try to raise additional funds. Right. And uh, so we've been doing that for quite some time. We have um, our big fundraisers each year are our rummage sales and a fun lunch that's held up at the Methodist Church right. each year. Right. And uh, so we do those. And um, we have been um, an all volunteer organization for the greatest amount of time. Um, but in 2019, we had decided at that time, Lynn moved out of town and uh, it just, with the age of all of our volunteers, it just became too much for us to uh, try to keep it running at the same level. Because mm -hmm. at this time, we probably give out 95% of our toys or new toys with 5% right. being used. So that's, you know, really flipped. And uh, so uh, to do all that we do, well, then it was just necessary to have somebody that could be there all year round because right. we are truly a year round project. I said, it's always amazing to me when, you know, you say something to people about that you're working in the summer or in the fall or spring, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they go, Oh, I didn't know that you did anything outside of December. And I'm just <laughs> like, well, yeah, it takes a little more than right. that. So, yes. People, uh, sometimes they just, without meaning mm -hmm. to, they just, they don't even think about the behind the scenes yes. and what it really takes. I was thinking when you said earlier, that people would donate their toys in December. And in my mind, I'm like, how do you ever get all those toys organized for four or 500 children yes, in yes. the month of, of December. December? It would be impossible. Oh and so goodness. that's why we really start, uh, you know, one of the reasons for doing all of the fundraising that we do and everything is that we start right after Christmas, uh, hitting all the sales that are mm -hmm. available and throughout the year hitting sales and uh, trying to buy toys and organizing toys all year round. We come to a point because you don't know until the parents register their children, uh, what ages, what gender, any of that that you're gonna have. Right. And so, you know, you're always lacking in some areas. And so we do have to buy things in December, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the majority of gifts, um, we at least hope are bought 
by right. the time that December 1st gets here. Right. So um, how many children do you guys serve? Typically, we yeah. serve around 1,200. It represents about 500 families usually, mm -hmm. and that's been pretty steady for, I would say, at least 10 or 15 years now. Wow. And wow, uh, think we, of that. we do only serve children in Duncan only because we're limited by funds and by uh, our volunteers that can be there to help. Right. Uh, but um, anyway, but that's a lot of kids still. That, to, to that. Serve. And, uh, so many kids. Yes. Wow. Yes. And and we do allow people, they do have to live in Duncan. Their children have to live with them in Duncan. We only register to one parent. We don't, if the parents don't live together, both parents cannot register a uh, child. Right. And uh, because our intention is to make sure every child gets a gift. Yes. And so um, we do limit that. But um, we wish that, that we could serve the world and everything, but, but we're just limited and can't. But mm -hmm. we don't limited uh, strictly by, uh, it's not limited on their income or anything because we know that there are uh, situations where maybe a parent has just lost a job or one of them has just been through surgery. I mean, with COVID, we certainly know that that has restricted a lot of parents that in other situations would be able to take care of their children. Right. And we just, we are about the kids. We wanna make sure the kids are taken care of. Right, and exactly. So, um, we just, you know, if they come to us and, and as long as they live in Duncan and their children live with them in Duncan, mm -hmm. then we are going to serve them if they feel like they need help. Okay, so um, I'm going to try to break this down just a little bit. So, Chris, we're going to start right after Christmas, kind of go through a year okay. with the toy shop. Okay. okay, so you start, you know, buying things up because I guess your storage area is empty now. Yes. Because you've just given everything right, out. Right. And so you start gathering things. Do you still accept used toys? Yes, we do. And the reason, I mean, we don't, we are not able to use all of the used toys uh, because we do want the kids to feel like they're getting new toys. Mm -hmm. We, you know, if we receive something that's in just impeccable condition, has all of its part, it's all clean and everything, well then yes, then we do put that on our shelves. But uh, otherwise, we will use it in our rummage sales that we have. Ah, and so we sell a yeah. lot of toys in our rummage sales. Oh, and so idea. we just take that money and buy a new toy with so it. So your donation of a toy would be a win-win. Yes, yes, one absolutely. Way or another, no, it's gonna benefit it the is. toy shop. Absolutely is. Okay, um, you just said something that reminded me of, at some point, I can remember you guys would, uh, I was there with like some Cub Scouts or something. And uh, just, to, just to give you an idea of some of the little details that have to be tended to, someone has to check all the batteries yes. in the toys that require batteries because you, you guys... Well, if they are a brand new toy that's been bought, uh -huh. we do not open up those toys if they have batteries that are in them. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we have just bought brand new batteries, but we do receive some batteries from people that uh, for different reasons, they have batteries that are really good batteries, but maybe they've been used once we get some you know uh, that have been used one time mm -hmm. and then this business is not allowed to use them anymore right. and so uh they will bring us their used batteries but we check all of those batteries to make mm -hmm. for sure because in that one use you never know if it's used up the majority of it or not and so we have little battery checkers mm -hmm. and so we do give uh some of the kids an opportunity to help us right i can way. remember uh certain scouts who lived at my house <laughs> checking batteries <laughs> yes, for yes. the toy shop because we've had a lot of batteries over the years <laughs> right right and, but i mean what an easy way to uh give a child uh, an opportunity to serve yes. their community, yes. you know, and I mean, just little jobs like that. And so even people who don't feel like they would be able to contribute a lot, they can give a little time to, you There's know, There's different batteries, and particularly even um, like when we have our rummy sales and different things like that, we've had people that have come and helped us. Um, speaking of the scouts, we had this year then, um, we had been in a city building for a number of years uh, to do our rummage sales. Right. We also used the building to store bicycles, store other things that we were out of room at our regular office building in. And uh, the city had to condemn the building because it needed mm -hmm. to be upgraded. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were no longer obviously able to use it because they tore it down. And so we had to find a building and buy it and bring it up to city code. And we spent the summer doing that. And so we had some items that would come into us and we had to put them in storage. We were very fortunate that we had some uh, really, really nice people that 
allowed us to use their storage areas or bought storage areas for us to use. But anyway, when it was time to bring all that stuff to our new building, then we had a scout troop that came and helped us. And oh, so that was go. an opportunity for the scouts to come and help again. Right. And then just recently that, I, I think it was that same group of scouts that put together some kitchens that we had bought, some oh, little kitchens. Oh. And uh, so that was really nice because we had about 10 of those kitchens that needed to be put together. Right. And so they did that for us. So it's not always, um, things that happen at the toy shop mm -hmm. that they do, but mm -hmm. sometimes uh, in other areas that. Right, but that's that's just a behind the scenes look at the kinds of things that take time that you have to prepare all year round. Yes, yes. And so um, you mentioned bicycles. Yes. Um, people, people donate bicycles? We do. For years and years, we had the most fabulous group of men who would take our used bicycles that came in and uh, fix them up and, you know, do minor repairs to them. Um, and we were able to give them out, but all of those men have since uh, had to quit because of age and mm. some of them uh, passed on. And so at this point, we do not have any groups that uh, are able to work on our bicycles. We're out there looking just to see right. if there's anybody, but at this point, we do not have anybody that uh, can work on bikes for us. So we're only giving out new bikes right now. Okay. And, but if people do bring us used bikes, uh, then we'll put them in our rummage sale and sell them. And again, I'll put turn that money into things that we can use for the kids. Right. Okay. So um, what time of year is the SPUD? The SPUD lunch, lunch. Is, in, is the first Tuesday of March every year. Okay. Uh, we clean potatoes on Sunday afternoon. Then we have a work day on Monday where we get all ready for it. And we can always use volunteers uh, on that Monday. Um, it's usually from around nine until two in the afternoon that we work. And then uh, on Tuesday is when we actually have the, the luncheon. But, uh, and then we sell tickets. So if people wanna help sell tickets or if they want to buy tickets, well then uh, we, we really, we usually sell about a thousand tickets. And so wow. it's a big event for us and uh, we, um, Dustin Cox has donated our potatoes almost since the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have a lot of people that donate desserts to us. So we have homemade desserts. And uh, so it's, food is really good. We have very, very, very loaded potatoes. Uh -huh. We have lots of things that go on top of the potatoes. Uh -huh. And uh, anyway, and then those delicious, delicious desserts. Right. And so, uh, and it's always held up at the Methodist Church, the First United Methodist uh -huh. Church. And uh, as I said, it's the first Tuesday in March. So. so mark your calendars and put that, get ready for the spud lunch. Please that's do. A, that's yes. A, yes. what another very easy way to support the toy shop. Exactly. Right? exactly. Um, and so you mentioned uh, the rummage sales. Do you have those? periodically through the year? We are probably going to be doing them uh, differently than we used to be in the past. Uh, it used to be that we just did one in April and then we did one in the first week in October. And um, we now we own our own building. We can kind of do as we want mm. to down there. And it's, uh, it's a little bit different the way that it's arranged. And I think that it's going to be really, really good. We did our very first one in October and we had a second one the first week in November and they were extremely successful. And so um, we have a place now to store everybody's items um, starting the 1st of January. Right now, this is where we're registering our parents. And so we've had to you know, get rid of all the donations mm -hmm. right now. And so we'll start again in January, taking donations and hopefully uh, have a lot and probably around the 1st of April, then we'll have our next sale. And then we may have them, we've talked about having them monthly. I don't know for sure if that's what we're gonna do mm -hmm. or have a monthly maybe for two or three months and then stop and then have another one in September and October or something. But right. anyway, um, just look for information out there because we will. And where do you promote that on your Facebook page? We promote it on our Facebook page. Usually we have something in the shopper and in the Duncan banner about it before okay. it happens. Uh, we, we have at times put up flyers about it, uh, but we just try to get the word out the best we can every way that we can that when they're going to be. So, so, uh, and I guess, I mean, I've seen almost anything I I've seen, I know youth groups, have helped in the past, like move things out of one storage area to go out for a uh, 
your one of yes. like a big we used to say we used to always that. do it out yeah. at the fairgrounds yes. but now yes. that we have our own building then we feel like we're going to be able to do them at this right. building because it's big enough for us to be able to do so uh, they might not be moving us from one place to another but then at the same time uh we've been able to use their help mm -hmm. uh still even in setting up coming down and helping us set up and stuff the biggest problem we have is that our volunteers are down there monday through friday uh, during the day and a lot of people you know need to come at night or need to come on the weekends and so we have to make special arrangements for things like that right, uh, right. but uh, but we still do try to use everybody that wants to volunteer because we would like everybody to experience part of what it's about and uh, and I will say that the donations that come into us um, we try to always use those to buy our toys and so a lot of these um, Rummage sale fundraisers. The financial, then that money helps donations, us pay. Right? The so, money donations we're trying to spend on the kids' okay, toys. Right. But the fundraisers that we do, the money, much of it is spent on the kids' mm -hmm. toys, but a portion of it goes towards um, our executive director's salary mm -hmm. as well as administra other administrative mm -hmm. costs we have. We have to pay utilities now on this new building as well as our mm -hmm. office building where we uh, package our toys and everything every uh -huh. year. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then just the other you know, costs that we have to come along. Uh, we're still in the process of kind of bringing this building up to code. There's a few things that we're still working on. Okay. And um, so, you know, there's just expenses that go along oh, with right. running any kind of business. And this right. is certainly a business. Even, and, if, though, even if it's a nonprofit, yes, there are still yes, expenses yes, that you yes. have. Right? I mean, you right. even have to pay taxes on right. your buildings and stuff sometimes. Right. So, you know, so there are different things that we have to do. Yeah. Okay. Man, can y'all hear that thunderstorm <laughs> stampede all that's going on our movie is really loud today um okay so um then you have you, we should be paying attention to the diff, the new way you guys are going to be handling things in yes. 2022 so you, you probably need to pay attention and look for rummage sale and, and information and things like that um so you you've gathered items you um taken your financial donations do you have like any kind of a a, a drive for collecting money or do you just have well, regular donors well we do or? have some regular donors but we do you know we have it on um on our web page or our website that uh that people can even make like monthly donations and okay. set up that if they uh -huh. want to um they can always donate any time of year uh you know they can send it in they can bring it by um then we also have, um, I, I think it's December 1st, which is a Wednesday, uh, what we call our blitz. And it's usually around the first or second of December every year. The day kind of changes uh, to one of those days, but it's at the very beginning of December. And it is what we call our Christmas blitz. And the reason that we do it is that is when we're encouraging people to bring their donations to us, whether it is a toy or a gift, because we do do from birth to 18 years old. Okay. So it's not always just toys. You know, there's a few things for high school, middle school and high school kids right. that aren't toys. Right. Uh, people will bring us, you know, hair dryers, makeup, um, curling irons, things like that. For boys, they bring in tools and wallets and you know, that type of things mm -hmm. that boys would like, uh, their hoodies and pajama pants and, you know, those kind of things. Right. So we have all those, but we need them at the very beginning of December because that's when we're filling our boxes. And it used to be that people would, you know, around the middle of December start thinking, oh, I need to take something down to the toy shop. And the 15th, we would be closing. And so, right. you know, we wouldn't get these things until the very end. And um, most of our boxes were filled by that time. So we encourage people to come in and bring and if they want to bring a financial donation instead well then we can certainly use that as mm -hmm. well and then that day we will have refreshments that we will offer to people and if they'd like to take a tour of the toy shop then they're welcome to do that and ah. so and we're there from nine in the morning until six in the afternoon and so on uh, the first on the first yes okay. the other days we kind of say we're there about 10 to 5 mm -hmm. each day but uh, monday through friday and but on that day we're there from nine until six okay so we've gone through the year and we we've, we've um you you've collected things and i guess you're are you storing things in your new warehouse then is that this, or, in the new warehouse are the things that we store that for the most part 
or for the rummage sale. But okay. there's a few overflow items that we don't have room for. All of them, like for instance, we give out diapers to all uh, children that are a year old and under. Actually. Um, about 18 months and under, then mm -hmm. they get diapers. And um, and so that's a lot of diapers. That is so we don't really have enough room for all of them in the toy shop when we start in our office, what we call our office building. So we will store those, our extra ones in the warehouse. And then as we need them, we can just run over there and get them. Okay. And, uh, and so there's a few other things that we store like that. And so um, in your office building where you fill the orders, um, you have things organized yes in yes. a certain way and so kind of kind of give us a visual of what that would look like well we have several different rooms and um we call it an infant room a girl's room and a boy's room and then there's um kind of a a room that is full of games and uh things that don't really belong in a boy or a girl's room like books, either one games, uh, books, yes things that kind of things and then well actually we have a, another separate area that is for books yes, because books. Okay. we try to give books to every child because yes. and that does not count towards the money that we're giving them because we just want every child to have an opportunity to have books so mm -hmm. we try to give out and we have a wonderful wonderful group of ladies uh, a lot of them are retired school teachers but it doesn't mean that you have to be to come and work on this project they start soon after the first year in the spring anyway and they go all the way until uh usually about september and uh they go through and they put the books in the order of um about of the age that it would oh, be right. like it's for a toddler for pre-k first mm -hmm. grade second grade and um so they go through and figure out what grade level that that book should be put in. Then we always ask the parent, at what grade level does your child read? Because just because they're in a grade doesn't necessarily mean some are lower, some are higher. And right. so we want to give a book that they would enjoy. If it's a book for a smaller child, if we have it, we try to find a little bitty stuffed animal that might be able to be put in with it anyway. Uh -huh. And then they package it all up and they get that out in addition to the toys that we're giving them. Very and, nice. Uh, so anyway, so we do that. But And uh, so um, when... When do well? Okay, so you have you have room boys and girls. Do you have like teenage? Actually, rooms, or? they are in just a section of the room. So if it's a girls' okay. room, then we have a section that has younger children's stuff, and then it kind of grows older, and then it kind of gets to where it's middle school and high school mm -hmm. uh, and stuff. So it's it's fairly easy to see what you're looking at when you go into a room. Mm -hmm. um, boys, the boys' room is not quite as big as the girls room yeah. unfortunately you know boys things are are not as big and and we just give out about fifty dollars in toys and so um you know that a lot of kids when they get older and it takes fifty dollars just to buy a something for right. them and yeah, stuff so you know and we would like for all the kids to get you know two or three items at least and so um sometimes but we have it priced so that you know mm -hmm. the value of whatever is there and how much it's going to be and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they are asking for a bike, then that is probably the only gift uh, in addition to the books that they're going to get. They might get one other real small something, but uh, bikes have gone up so much that mm -hmm. uh, many of them are over $50 wow. uh, to even buy a bike in this day. Yeah, so that's, um, that is significant. Anyway, so we always want the parents to know if, you know, if you really want your child to have a bike, well, then that's probably going to be the gift they get from mm -hmm. us. And uh, so, but we have a lot of groups also that, and we have a lot of groups around town right now, different uh, businesses and organizations, um, as well as, you know, a few churches and stuff that are uh, collecting toys for us. And mm -hmm. then they bring those to us. And um, during, uh, we have a Christmas in July and we have a church that brings uh, toys that and financial gifts that are mm -hmm. donated at that time, they do kind of a drive and we're mm -hmm. hoping that we can get some other churches and other groups may be involved oh, in doing something like idea. that uh, during the Christmas of July. So uh -huh. we'll have the opportunity to have those things early and oh, right. get them all organized right. and everything. So, um, so you guys spend the year collecting, organizing, yes. and then on December 1st, you, you've already got things organized to a degree. And so then you can just go fill in right. with whatever you get on the blitz day. Yes. So when do people, fill out their applications. Well, we just had pre-registration, which was last week okay. uh, on Thursday and Saturday of last week. And then we won't do registration again until we start November the 29th, which is Monday uh -huh. uh, after Thanksgiving. Okay. And so we will start and people will go to the warehouse building, uh, which is at 931 West uh, Willow. 
okay. and it's just about a half, half block from our office building. And so they will go to that building and we will have volunteers in there that will take the registrations and we will be taking them through December the 10th. And then on the 13th, we will complete filling all the boxes that we have to fill. Uh, the 10th is a Friday, I believe. And then uh, we will finish filling boxes the following Monday. Uh, when we get a box filled, we didn't used to do this. We used to deliver all of our boxes, but now then when a box is filled, then we call the parents to come and pick it up. Um, we did that last year because of COVID right. and it worked really, really well. And the parents seemed to like it and it worked well for us as, as well. So, well, uh, so yeah. we are doing that and hopefully we'll see if it goes okay this year too. Mm -hmm. And if so, that's probably the new trend that we'll start with. Uh, if somebody just absolutely cannot pick up their box, well then of course we will um, we will deliver. try to deliver it to them and on the 13th or 14th probably. Okay, so I can remember there with Scouts again, I'm sure, um, actually filling some boxes or filling yes. the orders. And it seemed like um, you would give us this information. No, there's no name. There's just age and then kind of this wish list. Yes, on, yes. Uh, and, and then because the things are priced, then um, you would pick and stay as close to that price as you know, max amount of money right. um, that you could. And then like you say, throw in a stuffed animal or a, and books, a books and, yes, and things like yes. that, that, that don't have any dollar value attached right. to them. And then you fill up this box. And um, so then that kid is getting their little wish list filled. Yes. And um, I, I know that that seems like something so simple and you're $50, you know, um, but what a joy for a child. Yes. To and, and I will say also if people, you know, because we aren't open just, you know, 24 seven for uh -huh. people to come in and, yeah. and help, but if they still want to do something like that, uh, then we do allow families to adopt children. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to, um, uh, you know, instead of just making a financial donation, you actually want to go buy for a child, then uh, you can call us and tell us that you want to do that, or you can come down to the toy shop and we will give you all the same information that we have down there that we're working with that tells you, uh, because we've given them a list of things that we have. And so then they kind of, you know, uh, that's what they go five whenever they're filling out their wish list but anyway but they have some suggestions but also we have a phone number that they can even call the parents and talk to them about the child and okay. get more specific on something that they would really like and then they can either bring their gifts back to the toy shop or they can take them to the parents they can wrap them before they take them or they don't have to wrap them mm -hmm. before they take them but anyway we we ask them you know to take them about the same time that we are or to at least call the parents and let them know when they're going to be taken but I mean they can do we've had people that adopt one child, we've had groups that will adopt seven or eight kids. And nice. uh, so, you know, we have all, all sizes of families that can be adopted out. Yeah. And, uh, and you guys get the gifts to the, the parents early enough that they can wrap them yes. and, you know, tuck them away yes. and surprise and the kids yes. and have all the fun. And, you know, I mean, how, uh, what a blessing to the parents too, who feel like, oh, we're not going to be able to give our kids much of it. I'm getting very emotional about this for some reason, <laughs> but we're not going to be able to give our kids much of a Christmas this year. You sure. know what this happened or this happened. And um, you guys are there to help them. Well, and I will tell you there, I don't think there's ever been a year that I've been associated with the toy shop that somebody didn't come in either a person that said, you know, I want to bring this donation to you all because five years ago, I had to have your help or, you know, last year I had to have your right. help or something or an, an adult that comes in and says, when I was a child, oh. we wouldn't have had Christmas without the toy shop. Oh. And I said, that's all it takes, you know, exactly. it's just hearing those stories and you go, okay, that's I can why do we're this here. another year. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I, I mean, you know, going. it just keeps you going every oh. year. And you just, you know, I said, it's about the kids. You just want them to know that, I said, we are God's hands and feet right. and you want them to know that God loves them. Mm -hmm. And so we just try to do this to just say, you're special. We care. Merry Christmas. Right. You know, God loves you. Right. And uh, so if we can, if we can do that and if it's one child or if it's all 1200 kids that yeah. really get it, yeah, uh, then it's all worth it. It's just totally and worth it. Viewers, I mean, mm -hmm. seriously, it, in this 
day and time where it's na 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 and mean 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 and ugly 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 what a what an absolute joy to know that the, here in Duncan we have this committed group of people who year after year after year for 80 years have made sure that families who have this need have a chance to to just have a little bit more normal Christmas. Yes. You know? Yes. I mean, that's just that's just so beautiful. And over and over again, mm -hmm. we've had guests who have talked about the generosity of our community. And I think that the toy shop is a shining example of our community supporting an organization. Without a doubt. Because I mean, we have a lot of wonderful volunteers. We have a lot of groups you know, all throughout the year, but you know, it, it takes the entire community. I said, we couldn't do this if it was, you know, up to the 20, 30, 40, 50 volunteers that we have. I mean, it is this whole community that is mm -hmm. making this happen. And we are so extremely grateful for everything that people do to help promote us, to help support us and right. just to be there uh, because I, it's wonderful. I can remember one time um, being there and getting my little paper and going down my list. And one of the things on the list was a blanket. And I remember thinking, wow, <laughs> a blanket. I mean, you, you guys, I don't think you have things like that. I, I can't remember. It seemed like that was something that you know, in the last few years, we have started have getting just, like uh, you know, those throws Yeah. that, and I, I mean, when they, some of the people that were doing the buying started buying those, and I was just like, who's ever going to want to throw? I was amazed at the number of people mm -hmm. that that's what they put on the When list. they saw your list mm -hmm. of that items, they would, that that, that was they would, something. Yeah, yeah, that they would pick that. And, you know, they said their kids can lay on the couch to watch TV or something and put that throw over them, and they're just the happiest little person in the world, yeah. so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And, um, and we do try for the littlest kids that are, like I said, under two years of age, um, that we know that getting all these toys are not the most important thing that they need in their lives right. as a general rule. Right. And so we try to give diapers, wipes, blanket sleepers, um, and then one or two small toys, but sometimes they can get blankets, you know, because that's mm -hmm. sometimes what they need is, right. uh, that they just need to wrap up in and stuff not necessarily when they're sleeping at night because the little ones they say don't put them under a blanket right. you know yeah, but, yeah. Uh, the new rule yeah. <laughs> but, uh, new rules. yes yes or it's an old rule um, that's brought back yes yeah, somehow or another <laughs> but um anyway but sometimes you know we do have blankets for the babies too uh -huh. but it's amazing the older kids that that need and want blankets right. too so do you guys have like diaper drives or things like that or do you just we have not those? ever done it usually we just purchase them uh -huh. and we've been really lucky uh rns has allowed us to purchase them through them uh -huh. at you know at a lower cost than we would have to otherwise that's and so awesome. that's been a real blessing for us mm -hmm. and um so we um I don't know that we've even thought of a diaper drive, but that might be a really good idea. So. There you go. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it seems like a, a pretty just, easy thing yes, that yes. people and, might respond and, to. And even if they just brought in diapers for us to use, uh -huh. uh, you know, a box of new diapers and yeah. stuff, then uh, that would that would be a good donation as well. Right, for uh, uh, some money to yes, buy to something, buy something else. else that we need. Right. So, um, like, what kind of what kind of like what is your annual fundraising goal to meet these the needs of 1200 kiddos well i don't know if we have an exact goal because uh because you don't know how many people are going to bring toys to you mm -hmm. you don't know exactly but i mean you can see if you just take 50 dollars and you multiply it by even a thousand, mm -hmm. then you're talking fifty thousand right. dollars and stuff. So you know, somewhere in that neighborhood is probably going to be a minimum mm -hmm. uh, of what we need mm -hmm. uh, just for the toys, just to buy toys just each that, year yes. and stuff. But um, we, like I said, we look for sales. Our the ladies that buy for us are really, really dedicated to trying to find toys on sale. They don't try to find you know just leftover stuff. They mm -hmm. want it to be stuff that the kids are really, really going to like, but mm -hmm. they do make an effort. They'll even go out of town to shop sales when they hear about a sale that's really good. Um, 
I'm just amazed all the time that they do that. What but, a great way to fill that little shopping bag you get. Yes, you know, yes. not, <laughs> not have to buy a bunch of stuff for yourself. <laughs> you can just do yeah, it for just somebody else. But, do that but they do. So that. you know, it takes it takes that much money to run it, and then, like I said, then we have other expenses and that we have to pay too. So mm -hmm. you know, we easily, you know. Probably need to raise a hundred thousand dollars every year. Probably so. I mean, and that's so, what I was yeah. thinking. You probably, yes. I'm, and you know, because you have the utilities, you have salary now. Yes. You have, you know, all of those things that you guys uh, are trying to be very responsible with the money you're given, but you do have these very practical needs yes. that are not associated with the gift giving part right. of it. Right. And, so, and without that, we couldn't do the gift giving part of it. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. They go. They literally go hand in hand. <laughs> they yeah. really, really do. Yeah. yeah. That is for sure. So, uh, but we, I mean, we have a very, very generous community. I'm even amazed at the people from out of town that even give to us. Really? And, uh, it's amazing. It is really amazing. Wow. Even some of the surrounding communities that give to us mm -hmm. and stuff. And we do try, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, if we are aware that there's a child that's on another uh, group's list of who's going to be receiving toys, then we try to tell them, you know, only, only from one, from one group, you know, that mm -hmm. you cannot receive from multiple groups. And mm -hmm. so we try to, you know, get with the other groups and see who they're serving and, and let us all serve just, you know, one family. And, right. Because uh, I mean, 1200 families who need a little help for Christmas, I mean, 1200 kids. Yes. Um, that might sound like a lot, but that is a drop in the bucket almost of uh, the number of kids in in Duncan right. alone yes. who would benefit, you know, from a little help. So you know, yeah, that's I'm glad just, you guys do that. We just so. uh, you know we try to be responsible with the people's money that's brought in, and uh, we do verify that the kids are in school or if they're being homeschooled, then they have to bring us some verification of their homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, we try to double check things and make for sure that all the information we've received is correct. And uh, and, and we feel like we do a pretty good job. Well, so I think we you must do a fantastic job because there's no way some an organization lasts for 80 years without proven credibility, <laughs> you know, your integrity, all of those things that people are not going to donate. Well, we appreciate that. And, that. and I will say Kim Davis is our executive director and she's just done an incredible job since she's been there. And I mean, she's really trying to grow the toy shop and make it bigger and better than it ever has been. Wow. And uh, I, I think she's doing just a terrific job. And so are you, are you, um, do you have a title? Well, I'm actually chairman of the board because uh, we were very, very fortunate in 2019, Bank First gave us the building that our uh, office and where we uh, do our gifts. Uh -huh. Anyway, that building is actually ours as a gift from ah. Bank First. And they are just getting ready to give us the parking lot that's across the street. So we are indebted to them forever. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, as a result of, having all of that, uh, then we, we are able to do, you know, a, a lot more otherwise, but, um, I was asking you, you were, you said you were chairman of the board. Oh, but, but when we got that building, then that was the first time that we ever legally had to have a board. We had oh, had uh -huh. kind of a volunteer board before that. Uh, but we had never had an official board. Mm -hmm. And, um, I said, actually, I went to a friend of mine in Tulsa that's over a foundation up there. And um, after we got the building and so because I knew we were going to have a few new expenses that we were going to be having to pay and everything. And he said, well, so who's on your board? And I said, well, we really don't have one. And he said, you don't have a board? <laughs> and I said, well, no. Just a bunch of volunteers. <laughs> we just, yeah, yeah, that's we're exactly just... <laughs> what we were. And this was before we'd even hired Kim. And he was just like, Kathy, I, you have to have a board. And he said, I'm going to, you know, give you some information right. and so he did and so we did we I mean they told us that you know you had to have uh, people you had to have an attorney you had to have uh, financial mm -hmm. people on your board you, you know there were different people that would fill different positions that uh, that knew some some of the legal areas that right. you would need to fulfill and um, and that's not what we had ever had to do before because we'd never owned the building and we didn't have some of the responsibilities that we now have. have and so anyway <laughs> so I am chairman of the board okay, and uh, so that's my position now uh -huh. 
and I, I don't know that uh, it's what I volunteered for, but it's what I got elected to. Well, you know what? You <laughs> and so I, I said, there's a lot smarter people out there that, that might be in this position, but anyway, it's but still I been wonderful to be associated. they're probably no more passionate. Well, I, I do love it. And I said, at least I have past information and exactly. I can bring that exactly. uh, to me. And we do have a couple of others that are uh, volunteers with mm -hmm. us that are on the board that can help us with that. Uh, knowing what we've done. So that would years. be another way a community member could help too, yes. is by serving on your board. Your board, yes. And yes. So, so if um, you're asked, please say yes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's exactly right. Well, what a, what a lot of information. I'm just blown away that the toy shop has been around for 80 years. I think that that is what a great little gift to our community. I mean, for real, that's thank you. Think of how many kids, all those kids through the years. We don't have numbers to go back all those years, but I wish we did because right? uh, it's it's been a lot of kids. Oh, that's so, that's just such anyway, a that's a it makes us feel good. Oh, it makes us feel very, should. very good. It should, you know, to to just be able to give um and out of out of your abundance to just be able yes. to give, you know, yes. to someone yeah. else. But as I said, it Everybody plays a part in a little way or a big way. Mm -hmm. it, it all comes together to make a whole. Right. So, um, guys, I would just um, suggest look at their uh, website. If you're interested in a tour or you want to uh, donate, if you want to go check it out, put December 1st on your calendar. You said 9 to 6. Yes. yes. 9 to 6 Please. that day. <clears throat> That'd be a wonderful opportunity. Go meet some of these wonderful ladies. And... Um, Enjoy Just refreshments. Enjoy <laughs> refreshments. I mean, it sounds like a fun time if you ask me. Um, Kathy, thank you so much for being the guest, well, our guest on Trail Talk today. Thank you for giving us this opportunity oh, yeah, because I, uh, it's always important for us to get our story out. I totally agree. And this is a perfect time of year. So you still have time to uh, viewers to donate, to help, to do something to make the toy shop a huge success again mm -hmm. this year. So I want to encourage you guys to do that. And um, we'll just be, well, we're going to put uh, the, is it just the toy shop? Is that how they would find you on Facebook? Uh, toy shop of Duncan. <laughs> okay. Toy shop of Duncan. We'll put that information in the um, comment mm -hmm. section. And also do you, uh, are the addresses of the buildings on your It probably is the, Facebook the main buildings at 111 South 9th. Uh, we do have a PO box for our mailing address, PO box 206, but uh, 111 South 9th is where they can bring donations mm -hmm. to, okay. and that's where the Blitz will be. Okay. And then just a half a block to the north is where our new warehouse is. Okay, where so, we could go to a rummage yes, sale if yes. we wanted to. And if anybody okay. needs to come and register children, that's where we would oh, be registering that's where the, the reg children. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, perfect. So uh, I am mm -hmm. so glad you could be here. We have so much great information. And um, when we're all through, we always say happy trails together. Well, so you ready? Yes. Okay. Happy, happy trails. trails.